A normal guy hearing head and shoulders, looking for a dandruff. But chartist hearing head and shoulders, looking for a neckline. At which of two sides are you? If you are still at the first one, but aspiring for the second, you've hit the right address, as we are recognizing all the patterns around the technical analysis all the time and trying to find out which of them is most profitable. So today we are talking about stock market, crypto and all the indicators, all the gauges, all the things that impact the stock markets the most. Welcome to another episode of Blocker Vision TV. And we are getting to economy view. So all of the signs from heaven and earth are telling us that we are approaching a tapering period. But really? So recent uh, week employment report for September is telling us uh, that the Fed uh, will be nudged to uh, delay uh, this until September. So announcement, uh, whether the um, announcement um, of the Fed will be made before year end depends on the strength of uh, definitely employment and also uh, it's something we need to remember that is holding back um, by increasingly acute labor short shortages and the spread of the Delta variant. So due to lots of economists and analysts uh, tapering by the end of the year is something uh, nearly impossible. But but um, Fed is still in an illusion that uh, it may be possible. So we'll find out, but the Fed will probably have to um, just uh, say sorry for its uh, two early judgments. One of the adversaries of Fed and how they are making the, their statements is Mrs. Master that is claiming that um, literally following an increase in retirements and other changes, overall labor force participation may not return to pre-pandemic levels, adding that the Fed should determine a list of indicators that will uh, follow systemically uh, over time. So that's what we are talking about all the time. So um, so Fed is expecting um, the labor market to return to these pre-pandemic levels, but it won't happen uh, this year or even probably the next one. But it's expecting that tapering will uh, be brought to the market this year. So it's a total shit show right now uh, as they're claiming uh, the other things that they are doing. And um, it's definitely something that need to be straightened out. So Messer also noted that uh, inflation could remain high this year before coming back down next year. However, she still thinks there are upside risks to the outlook. And um, yeah, also that, that's important. One of the aspects Fed officials need to clarify is what time frame and what metrics they will use to determine uh, just mind, uh, if inflation is averaging 2% in line with the central bank's target. And the one that is a better forecaster than uh, the Fed is just a consumer. So the crowd is disappointed with uh, how the US economy is developing and uh, it's a uh, one uh, hurdle for the growth engine of US. So right now the debt ceiling that is also a debatable uh, issue as of recent might be also something that uh, will erode consumer confidence further uh, if it will be rejected. So um, there are lots of concerns in terms of uh, how the consumers will uh, will react to uh, this uh, uh, upcoming uh, fall um, and winter. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, there is no very much positive signs of uh, of boost and dynamic growth in terms of uh, quarter three and quarter four for US. 
On the other hand, there might be a light at the end of the tunnel uh, where we can find that capex, that is a uh, capital expenditure uh, of corporate, uh, might be increasing in the next year. A recovery in business investment is critical for longer term growth as capital accumulation is key for lifting productivity uh, growth. So right now uh, it is jumping by 13% this year uh, according to S&P Global Ratings with growth in all regions and broad sectors, especially in semiconductors, retail, software and transportation. So uh, Morgan Stanley is also forecasting that global investment will reach uh, higher than 100% um, of pre-recession recession levels by the end of uh, 2021 and the end of uh, 2022 uh, accordingly. So um, it's right now uh, also registered uh, to uh, be a much faster recovery than previous downturns. So that's something that uh, we need to watch uh, carefully, but um, that might be uh, difficult for us if this uh, uh, the second wave of pandemic uh, will hit the economy. Otherwise, uh, there might be a, a more positive uh, outcome of uh, what the uh, quarter uh, three and quarter four may bring. Capex is very important uh, because as this stimulus fade of economy, uh, we need uh, something that will boost uh, the growth or at least sustain it. Uh, so uh, the business activity and also structural reforms is something uh, very, very desirable. And the sooner we'll just uh, find out that uh, the COVID problems that are paralyzing uh, supply chains and uh, assembly lines around the world are uh, just then uh, endemic problems we need to must live with the earlier we will get out of this pandemic recession. So uh, those uh, assembly lines and uh, supply chains that are paralyzed by a uh, pandemic won't be such, uh, such disturbing uh, for uh, customers around the world uh, if uh, those restrictions wasn't uh, wouldn't be as hard as they are. So there is very, very small uh, percentage of uh, civilians that are taking advantage of uh, these uh, vaccinations as uh, the newest research are showing. So uh, within such countries as Israel, that uh, has um, uh, nearly the highest percentage of uh, vaccination and uh, vaccination um, uh, nation, um, uh, we can find that uh, there is a, a nearly similar daily cases as uh, there were without vaccination in the similar um, uh, period of, uh, of uh, time uh, previous year. So we need to understand that um, the number of countries to modify their COVID management strategies and begin transitioning towards the acceptance of COVID as an endemic problem they, that they must live with should be increased. So uh, the earlier we will just make an understanding of it, the sooner we will get out of these problems. However, but the time of understanding the fundamentals of stock market due to Fed's policy is still extremely supportive and financial conditions uh, are very easy for equities and commodities to grow. But we need to be also a very careful. Even if those um, gauges of um, commodities are at the uh, highest uh, highest price levels uh, within recent plenty of years, uh, we need to be careful. But because uh, these are normally the um, conditions that are just uh, catalyzing the transitions in the stock market and uh, that uh, might be a time where you have to be really, really careful which companies you are investing in. So um, even if uh, this uh, environment is supportive uh, growth, we are at the very high levels right now. 
And looking on uh, such a chart of uh, S&P 500 earnings growth outlook, we may find that uh, uh, it's something that is representing the consensus of Wall Street analysts is uh, that um, expected annual increase in earnings over the business cycle is uh, rising right now. So with this outlook that is of the chart, uh, we may claim the situation right now as the new paradigm of the secular regime. But uh, for the people um, that have more faith in cycles, um, it's more um, like um, more, uh, this, this environment right now is more like uh, the um, something that is uh, deducted by uh, policy stimulus. Um, and finally, will uh, come full circle. So the risk uh, for the circles is that even after this exponential expectations um, right now, um, there uh, need to be a time also of uh, those expectations to be evaporated. Right now, let's quickly get through crypto outlook and we can find that uh, on Bitcoin chart, we are trying to rebounce from this um, recent support of 43k. So uh, in terms of um, exchange flows, we can find that uh, while BTC is knocking on the floor uh, to reconfirm a support, uh, a constant outflow um, of uh, Bitcoins is being, uh, is being registered. So uh, this exchange outflow is um, decreasing. So it means that uh, exchange reserve uh, are falling and uh, selling pressure is um, is uh, also um, getting down. So uh, if it does hold for some time, it's uh, a great possibility for a decent uh, bounce from here. So uh, the around the BTC, um, there is a whole ecosystem that is increasing and expanding. So uh, more and more retirement funds uh, are planning uh, for more exposure to crypto. Um, Morgan Creek and blockchain capital uh, just uh, pointing. So uh, that's something that might be uh, favoring uh, further uh, growth but right now uh, we need to uh, just get through a 50k uh, psychological level in order to uh, bring back uh, further moves higher on the other hand something that may stop uh, this um, industry from rapid development is this uh, returning topic of uh, energy use of Bitcoin. So uh, some jurisdictions as uh, US and EU has uh, serious problems in terms of uh, setting up uh, the rules for uh, this industry in order to uh, sustain it and to keep it uh, as it is. So EU, especially EU Parliament, has uh, different aspects uh, of uh, viewpoints on where the industry might be going and uh, showing some obstacles where such uh, political group, groups like uh, the Greens want to even ban proof of work consensus protocol. So that's something that may be of concern in the um, future time. And getting to market movement section, we can find that uh, in terms of economic calendar, uh, we had consumer inflation expectations from US that is uh, higher than forecasted at 5.2%. On Tuesday, uh, we already had unemployment rate from uh, Great Britain and it uh, turned out to be uh, as forecasted at 4.6%. Uh, and uh, today also from US, we had inflation rate that turned out to be uh, as recent at 5.3% and there is no uh, surprise uh, as um, recent uh, ratings. So uh, for the week to come, I would observe uh, tomorrow's inflation rate month over month and also uh, industrial production from EA. Um, so uh, that is supposed to be at 0.5% um, regarding recent minus uh, one 
uh, percent and also inflation rate uh, from Canada that is upcoming um, export import prices prices from US and uh, for uh, Thursday I would observe retail sales and initial jobless claims from US uh, whether it's diminishing um, and uh, as uh, fulfilling Fed's expectations or otherwise it's increasing due to uh, COVID expansion. So uh, that's it for this week, uh, but uh, we can observe also uh, the Friday's inflation rate uh, month on month uh, gauge um, whether it will um, meet the forecasts um, because uh, the forecasts are a little higher than uh, previous uh, gauges. And right now let's get to um, trade idea section and uh, I have for you a proposition for today that is a DocuSign stock. DocuSign uh, is a American company that was headquartered in San Francisco and is allowing organization to manage electronic agreements. So uh, this is the one of the stock that had its beautiful run uh, since uh, this uh, pandemic dip uh, towards the end of uh, August and um, the price has surged for more than, uh, more than uh, 4x and uh, right now uh, we are consolidating within uh, this uh, exactly channel. So uh, DocuSign is uh, the company that has um, a very strong position in a, a e-signature space. It's a market-leading um, company right now and also uh, the, the company that accelerated in growth uh, during this uh, um, pandemic uh, time where the, um, the need of um, e-signatures has uh, risen uh, to the significant uh, levels. Looking for some fundamentals of the company, uh, that definitely is a growth stock uh, that uh, with earnings per share for next year at over 20% and also sales quarter over quarter, quarter so quarterly revenue growth uh, at the level of uh, 49%. It's one of the, uh, one of the highest uh, grow, uh, growing company uh, among industry. So DocuSign also has a very strong data of operating margin and return on equity um, and return on asset. So it's uh, something that is making a stock very, very attracting right now. Uh, but cash to debt uh, is lower than it was um, in the history. So it's something that needs to be improved. However, uh, for such a growing stock, the financial strength strength of now uh, might not be perfect, but it's still good for uh, the uh, future uh, good performance. So uh, with all those um, all those other ratings uh, that are, are very low um, comparing to industry, um, we need something that is a, a little of a concern. But as with this uh, very new stock. Uh, we find that uh, that might be uh, something that is not uh, as of uh, huge importance right now, such as uh, PB ratio or EV to EBITDA uh, or EV to revenue uh, still need to be um, need to be uh, improved. But right now, uh, may be something that uh, is not an obstacle for the future uh, right performance. For the DocuSign, analysts uh, are making a, a bet on average at uh, 340 uh, bucks uh, for the September of 2022. And uh, right now, with this uh, estimation and uh, with sitting at the possible uh, double bottom, that might be a rebound for the uh, recent, uh, recent resistance at 314 uh, bucks. For the DocuSign right now, I would find this support to um, sustain and uh, uh, make a, a possible uh, basement for a future um, future, future uh, rebounds. So uh, I need this support to um, to uh, be kept, and uh, of this support right now, 
uh, I would make such a bet to the upside for the lowest target at uh, uh, at uh, the level of uh, 280 and uh, with a stop loss at 267. If this um, support won't be um, won't be um, kept, I would find um, if this uh, won't hold, uh, I would find this stock to get lower, and uh, I would consider to exiting of my uh, position. So right now we are sitting at a very important level that uh, was uh, previously become a resistance that right now is a support and uh, with it uh, I would find DocuSign uh, to rebounds to at least at least three, uh, 280 uh, bucks. Uh, what's next we need to observe uh, but uh, I would find Mm, uh, this stock also to move even higher during uh, during this fall. In terms of area of an entrance, uh, I would find this exactly um, this exactly area. So uh, with this one uh, limited by uh, 268 and uh, 273. Uh, that might be there might be a good um, area of entrance otherwise it if it won't hold uh, i wouldn't find this proposition as useful and just switch to another another um, proposition of a trade in the next um, next time so uh, remember about uh, risk management about setting uh, alarms or um, stop losses so uh, this is it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just put it in the comment section below.